All right, time for our town meeting program here on Wednesday, the 25th of March. Good to have you with us, and a thanks again to Cordova Wireless Communications, which sponsors your local talk show here on AM 1450. If uh, you, well, this doesn't make a lot of sense to tell you at the beginning of the show that if you miss it, it'll be on the YouTube channel, so we'll save that part for the end. At any rate... On the agenda today, the latest uh, information from the governor's press briefing yesterday. And then we'll go over the latest news release from our local Cordova prepared folks that came out from the city of Cordova. Some of that will be redundant, some of it will not. But it does address uh, an issue that has been coming up. I've seen social media chatter about it. Um, And it has to do with the two different travel mandates regarding people getting off of airplanes, essentially, Uh, because one of them covers the whole state and actually, as we told you yesterday, has some pretty stiff penalties for people who ignore the quarantine orders. But Cordova also has one for people coming in from anywhere, even another city within Alaska, which is not covered under the governor's mandate but that the city is working to address. Now, at the time of this show, we don't have uh, a finished document in hand, but as you'll hear, that is something that they're going to take up and they're going to try to make those two things work together. And then toward the end of our session here, we'll take a look at uh, some information coming out of the legislature, bills that have been passed, bills that are pending, and I think that will do it for today. So glad to have you with us. And we'll start kind of with the news here, uh, with the main headline being that the first Alaskan to die from COVID-19 has become a thing. Now, I, you know, it, probably not awesome of me to, to dig into this, but I got to say it's, it's very disappointing to see Alaskan media with their headlines on this story distorting the reality of it, Uh, because if you looked at a lot of, you know, after the government made this announcement that an Alaskan had died from this disease, they made it sound, the the headlines made it sound like, you know, it was an Alaskan resident who caught it in the state and died in the state, which is not true. Uh, So let's preface this by saying that while it is a resident of Alaska, technically an Alaska resident who has died from COVID-19, it was somebody who caught it in Washington and also died in Washington. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't take away uh, at all from, from the tragedy of this. It's just, it's just kind of disappointing to even see our Alaskan media mischaracterizing things in the in the midst of this, because that scared a lot of people. And and to the credit of um, people who were leaving comments on some of these, you know, the news outlets that did this, they were, they were tearing into them pretty good for the misrepresenting headline. Because when you don't portray that story actively, it, it logically would make some people very, very nervous. So anyway, the state has technically experienced its first COVID-19 related death, although again the person was not in state. During yesterday's daily press briefing, Governor Dunleavy announced the fatality as well as six new confirmed cases in Alaska, bringing Alaska's total number of confirmed cases to 42 at the time of the briefing. They actually discovered another one afterwards, so it's up to 43. Dr. Ann Zink, Alaska's chief medical officer said the deceased had contracted the virus and died. I should say had contracted the virus and died. Both of those got sick and died outside of Alaska, but were nonetheless an Alaskan resident. She said the deceased was an older person in a high-risk group who contracted the virus and died in Washington state. The governor stressed the need for Alaska's health care industry to become more independent referencing Alaskan businesses which have been pivoting in order to assist with the pandemic. For example, distilleries making hand sanitizer. That was a great story that I, that I saw. They can't make vodka, so they're making hand sanitizer. 
which they're giving away in that community. It's not here. It's uh, one or more of them in the bigger areas. Other companies manufacturing personal protective equipment in-state and so on. Dunleavy said that uh, Alaska has done, quote, pretty good, end quote, in comparison to other states, but that it could do better. Both he and Dr. Zink emphasized the importance of social distancing, again, in order to avoid spreading the virus and reduce the potential strain on Alaska's medical system. And in fact, Dr. Zink is getting increasingly tired of mincing words. Here's what she had to say. And so, you know, as the governor mentioned, don't carpool, don't sit close to each other on a bus, don't touch other people except for your family members who you immediately live with. So that means don't have play dates together. That means if you are a physical therapist, if you do any, any sort of profession that involves touching someone else, We've tried to mandate it all and put everything else out there. Everyone has an exception for it. I feel like I've spent all day dealing with everyone's exceptions. And the reality is this virus doesn't care what your exception is. This virus is going to infect you if you don't slow things down and you don't move apart from each other. So please, just for two weeks, stop what you're doing. Stay away from each other. So she's clearly getting kind of tired of people wondering if they can get out of having to follow the rules. And then again, after the press conference, another positive case was confirmed in Ketchikan. So the statewide total, as of this moment, is 43. Now, let's move on to the latest news release from the city. And again, the city's output is a coordinated effort between the Cordova prepared emergency management folks, city of Cordova, CCMC, and Alonka, which I still think is great and I like to keep bragging about because you got to love the way our folks try to work together on things and make sure they're on the same page. Cordova's COVID-19 case count, thankfully, is still at zero at this point. And the city wanted to dig into what's called State of Alaska Health Mandate Number 10, the one on travel. And what they say is currently the city of Cordova is working on guidance for combining and homogenizing both the governor's mandate number 10 and city of Cordova health mandate number one. And during the interim, the city asks that both mandates are respected and followed to the best of the public's ability. State agency offices are currently working on putting processes in place to support Mandate 10 in the rural communities. When further information is available, there will be guidance on what that process will look like in Cordova. This is a good time to remind folks again, by the way, that if you have any questions about Cordova's health mandates or processes, recommendations, cordovaprepared at yahoo.com is the email address you'll want to use to get to the folks who are vetting the information and and putting out the official statements. So if you want to ask them directly, cordovaprepared at yahoo.com is the email. And they close this part by saying, thank you as we work together through these processes. Your efforts, patience, and consideration are appreciated. Now we talked about the governor's mandate on travel yesterday and To kind of summarize that, what the administration is saying is that anybody coming into Alaska from outside the state needs to follow the quarantine protocol that was laid out, the 14 days and so forth, unless you are in one of those critical industries, in which case your industry is supposed to have its own special protocols for how you can work and still be following the rules. And kind of the exclamation point in the governor's announcement was that if Alaskans are caught breaking, in other words, if somebody comes into Alaska from outside and is not following those rules, which they will know about because there are flyers up and they also have to fill out a form in order to get into Alaska about telling them they need to quarantine and documenting where they're going to quarantine and so forth. And if uh, somebody comes into Alaska from outside 
and doesn't follow those rules, there are punishments now for that, a fine of up to $25,000 and maybe even up to a year in jail or both, depending on the case, I guess. So that was what the state put out yesterday. Now, Cordova had a health mandate, which we're going to run down here again, which says basically the same thing, except doesn't have the, the, the penalties attached. And the other difference with the Cordova mandate, as we'll cover, is Cordova's applies to anyone coming into Cordova from anywhere. So the state mandate is about people outside Alaska coming into the state. The governor's mandate doesn't include or involve or penalize people traveling from city to city within Alaska. Cordova's health mandate does cover people going city to city, specifically coming from anywhere by airplane and presumably by boat, coming from anywhere into Cordova. So here's here's the language of that, if you don't remember it from before. Cordova health mandate number one, following federal, state, and local declarations of emergency and due to escalating incidences of positive COVID-19 cases within the state of Alaska, To prevent or slow the spread of coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19, the city of Cordova has issued its first health mandate. This came back out on or came out back on March 20th. Air entry into Cordova. If you are entering Cordova by commercial air service or have entered within the last 14 days, you must, number one, stay home and maintain social distance from household members about six feet for 14 days from the date of your return to Cordova. And point two, contact your employer and do not go to work for the entirety of the 14-day period. To monitor your health, take your temperature with a thermometer two times a day and monitor fever. Also watch for cough or trouble breathing. This mandate does not limit outdoor recreation for individuals who have recently traveled as long as proper social distancing of six feet or more is maintained, and these individuals are encouraged to try to avoid others while engaging in outdoor activities. This is another question, by the way, that's come up in chatter. If I'm quarantining and I have to stay at home, can I go outside? Yes, you can, and in fact, you're encouraged to by the the medical folks uh, at the state level. The federal level's talked about this. Um, and here at the local level, too. Being outside is is good for you if you're healthy enough. Just make sure that you don't break the bubble. Stay at least six feet away from anybody else. But taking a walk by yourself, absolutely fine. And, you know, there have also been people criticizing others for doing that. Why are, why are people out, you know, going for a walk? Well, they're supposed to. Get fresh air and so forth. Just don't get too close to people. Now, there's a section here on exemptions to the Cordova health mandate. Personnel deemed essential health care and emergency services employees will be exempt from the 14-day self-isolation requirement. Returning employees that are deemed essential will be required to wear a face mask, practice exceptional hand hygiene, and only go into a place of employment for functions deemed necessary to ensure public safety and health. Facilities will take appropriate measures to monitor the health of all staff. Essential health care and emergency services employees include CCMC employees, Ilanka Clinic, public health nurse, Cordova Police Department, Cordova Volunteer Fire Department, Coast Guard, state troopers, and USFS, that's Forest Service Enforcement Officers. If you have any questions about this mandate, A frequently asked questions document will be shared by Cordova Prepared soon, clarifying some commonly misunderstood areas regarding this mandate. If you have specific questions right away, it's recommended that you email cordovaprepared at yahoo.com, that same email address. If you want to reach the state unemployment folks, that number is 888-252-2557. Again, 888-252-2557. Going over again, city facility closures. Of course, the schools are shut down. That's going to be until at least May 1st. Cordova Public Library is closed. Cordova Historical Museum and Gallery, Badarki Rec Center, Bob Corn Memorial Pool. 
DMV is available by appointment only between the normal hours of Tuesday to Thursday, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. until further notice. Only one person will be permitted in the DMV office at a time. And again, that's by appointment only. So call 424-6125 to schedule your appointment. City Hall, also available by appointment only between their normal hours of Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, until further notice. Utility payments can be dropped off in the drop box located near the exit of the upper parking lot. You can also contact the finance department regarding other matters at 6200, or you can email them at either of these email addresses, finance2, that's the number 2, finance2 at cityofcordova.net, and finance3 at cityofcordova.net. The harbor office is closed to walk-ins. Payments can be made by mail or by phone, weekdays 8 to 5. Appointments can be made to purchase shower tokens in bulk, weekdays 8 to 5. Shipyard services are also by appointment. The harbor department will not be accepting mail or packages. If you have mail or packages being delivered to the harbor office, they ask you to make other arrangements. And then finally, some assets that the city mentions in their latest release for getting more information. At the national level, coronavirus.gov, that takes you to the CDC. At the state level, coronavirus.alaska.gov takes you to the state's page, and all of the state mandates are on there. So if you want to look at the details, for example, of the state travel mandate, the various industries that are exempted in, in, in a modified way from the quarantine rules and from the penalties, that kind of thing, go to coronavirus.alaska.gov. That is a very informative website, by the way. Uh, if you want to contact the state for non-clinical questions and want to call, you can dial 211. And then for the city... And the local information, local mandates, link to Cordova Prepared, that kind of thing, cityofcordova.net, the regular City Cordova website, is where you want to go. The city asks that everybody does their part, practice the CDC guidance to keep Cordova free of COVID-19 for as long as possible. Please take every precaution to care for yourself and loved ones. Updates will be posted regularly on the Cordova Prepared page of the City of Cordova website. They also have a really good Facebook page. And anybody that's on Facebook, I would really recommend that you follow this, this page. It's a Facebook group called Cordova Prepared. And if you, just, if you go to Facebook and you search in that search bar up at the top of the page, uh, put Cordova Prepared in there, it'll take you to it. And then once more, general local questions can be directed to cordovaprepared at yahoo.com. So again, to kind of conclude this main area of focus for the city right now regarding travel, what they're asking is that folks follow both the governor's mandate on travel and the city mandate on travel. The governor's covers people coming into Alaska from anywhere outside Alaska. The local one covers people coming into Cordova from anywhere else. So essentially what the city's asking is just follow both, and as soon as they've been able to consolidate the two and have an action plan so everybody can work under one set of criteria, they'll put that out. And we'll, of course, share that with you as well. If you're just joining us, this is our town meeting program for March 25th. If you've missed any of it so far, you can go to Robbie's Cordova TV page on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash Cordova TV, which is our visual component of the Cordova radio operation. And there actually isn't video of this, as you'll see. Uh, it's, it's audio only, but it's where we're archiving these programs, so it's easy for people to get to them and, and listen to them. Now, we'll take a few minutes here to Go over the latest from the Alaska legislature. Our Cordova Legislative Information Office is doing its thing, which we appreciate in sending out their announcements. So some news out of there. Conference committee is going to be working on a final budget because there was some disagreement between the Senate and the House on how the budget should uh, work. 
Sounds like most of it is having to do with whether there's going to be an extra dividend as a COVID-19 sort of relief package for folks that are being economically impacted by having to not go to work. So it says, after working through last weekend, on Monday, the Senate approved an amended version of House Bill 205, the fiscal year 2021 operating budget, which had uh, an amendment to pass out a $1,000 sort of extra dividend to everybody that got the last regular dividend. Due to differences between the House and Senate versions, a conference committee was appointed to reach agreement on each of the differing budget items. The committee is likely to call meetings, likely on relatively short notice in the coming days to review and vote on items. The final bill, as agreed to by the conference committee, will return to the House and the Senate for final passage. The 24-hour rule took effect on Tuesday when appointment of the conference committee for the operating budget bill was completed. The rule reduces the notification time required for meeting announcements of bill hearings to at least 24 hours. That notice is usually five days, but they're cutting that down because they need to move a little faster. So if there are things you want to, if there's legislation that you want to follow or testify on, be aware it could come up with 24 hours notice and you'll probably want to check the state page or communicate with our legislative information office to be up to speed. Now, recent bills dealing with COVID-19 in Alaska, one that recently passed the House and Senate addresses unemployment benefits. That's House Bill 308, which reduces the waiting period for applicants and increases the weekly amounts for dependents. And there are additional provisions in the bill being transferred to the governor for his signature. HB 308 reads, in summary, an act relating to unemployment benefits during a period of state or national emergency resulting from the novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19 outbreak and providing for an effective date. There's also House Bill 309, which is an act relating to the procedure for confirmation of the governor's appointments relating to the Board of Mental Health Trust Authority. HB 309 temporarily extends the time for which the legislature can meet in joint session to confirm the governor's cabinet appointments and appointments to state boards and commissions. In the event of the need to adjourn early due to COVID-19 or if social distancing measures prevent the legislature from meeting jointly, HB 309 would allow the legislature the option of confirming governor appointees prior to the convening of the 32nd Alaska State Legislature. House Bill 309 maintains as much of the regular confirmation process as possible while allowing the legislature the flexibility to safely meet at a later date to give this important process its due. That bill passed the House 35 to 1 and is currently on the Senate's calendar. Another House Bill 310 addresses four issues of economic uncertainty as a result of the COVID-19 emergency declaration. That bill would add a new section to suspend statutory and regulatory deadlines for the Regulatory Commission of Alaska. It would place a moratorium on disconnecting residential utility service. It establishes regulatory assets for aggregating uh, unpaid utility bills and also places a moratorium on evictions and foreclosures. That bill was heard March 22nd by the House Labor and Commerce Committee and could be moved out of that committee at any time. So if you want to keep an eye on that one, that's HB 310. The LIO also reports that the Senate, the Alaska Senate, spent most of yesterday debating Senate Bill 241, There was considerable discussion of Section 9 of the bill regarding elections. In the end, the bill passed unanimously, although reconsideration was requested by one member, so the bill will go back to the Senate floor today, the 25th. After passage, it will be sent to the House, where it's expected to be quickly advanced to the floor for debate and passage before both bodies adjourn or recess later this week. 
and the nuts and bolts of SB 241 if you want to follow it, an act extending the March 11th, 2020 governor's declaration of a public health disaster emergency in response to COVID-19. The related items are a financing plan, standing orders for the chief medical officer, occupation and professional licensing, telemedicine and telehealth, fingerprinting requirements, elections in the calendar year 2020, permanent fund dividend applications, automatic voter registration, tax filings, payments and penalties, and shareholder meetings. By the way, on the dividend, the deadline to apply for the PFD has not been changed. It's still March 31st, which, of course, is coming right up on us here at the time of this broadcast, only about a week away, less than a week away, I guess. So it's still March 31st, and you can apply for that online, of course. If you have a, a problem with that or concern about that, the Legislative Information Office is a good place to get more information. I'm pretty sure that they're not taking visitors in the office, but are still taking calls and correspondence and so forth. So if you have questions, the LIO is always a good place to ask questions about PFD applications. The main thing to know is that the deadline has not changed. And actually, applying online is is very, very easy. We've, we've been doing it for years. In fact, once you do it, once you apply for it online, it remembers a lot of your stuff and kind of autofills it. So subsequent years, you just have to kind of go through again and make sure everything's current. For the most part. So I believe that does it for today. We appreciate you listening. Hope these programs are continuing to be helpful. Again, if you missed this show, it is uh, going to be archived on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Cordova TV. Robbie's vision for that was for it to be kind of the Cordova television, local television station to the extent that that's possible. And again, you don't get to look at a webcam of me saying this stuff because who wants to see that? So it is still a, a radio program on a visual medium. YouTube.com slash Cordova TV. All of our shows that we've done on this subject are archived there. We also have a video on there of when Mayor Copeland first announced that health mandate about travel. So uh, you can see that as well. Remember... Excellent assets are the Cordova Prepared Facebook page, an excellent thing to add to what you follow on Facebook. There's coronavirus.alaska.gov. That state page is extremely good. If you have any questions, that email address, cordovaprepared at yahoo.com, is the way to connect with our local folks who are doing the official work vetting of information, compiling and consolidating and making all of this stuff interface. So if, if you've got a question, that really is an outstanding, even more so really than, say, posting a question on Facebook on the Cordova Prepared page, because a lot of people, well-meaning as they may be, have a tendency to, you know, share misinformation that they've heard from non-official sources and that kind of you know, at at uh, at best can confuse people, and at worst just turns into a full-on dumpster fire. So, again, if you want to ask a question directly, Cordova Prepared at yahoo.com. We'll get the rest of your 10 a.m. hours programming loaded up and ready to roll here. Our show's brought to you by Cordova Wireless Communications. By the way, look into the measures that CTC has put into place for making your internet work better during these troublesome times. They've, they've, they've done, I, I don't remember all the details, but they've expanded packages and turned on free Wi-Fi in different places and a bunch of things so people can stay connected. So look into that. I would imagine it's on their website. I've seen Facebook posts about it. So uh, that's a really nice effort on their part. So, again, thanks for listening. Town Meeting Talk Show on KLAM. We'll see you next time.